Hey, good morning everyone. Happy fall fishing. Today, we are fishing a public lake for some, well, multi-species, mainly perch though, yellow perch, because I like catching yellow perch in the fall. And man, their colors are so beautiful, especially if you guys look at right here, right my background, right? The fall foliage, well, it looks like a, it's a tail end right here in South Jersey, but still, the yellow perch is gonna be your foliage because they're just so beautiful. Anyway, let me show you guys what I'll be using today. I'm using the Caskin Kestrel Elite BFS Reel that I have upgraded with Michael Barron's as well as I took off two magnets, okay? I am fishing it with the Zephyr Ultralight BFS Rod, a uh, four pound mono, six pound Destron, um, braided line from casting as well. And uh, I'm throwing a 1 16th ounce jig head plus the Z-Man Shad Fries. So let's get to it. All right, folks, we got the Z-Man Shad Fries. This is a 1.75 inch swim bait and I got it on a VMC Moon Eye jig. This is a 1 16th ounce. I got some four pound mono from Veravis, the Absolute CB. And I got the Cast King Kestrel Elite BFS Reel upgraded Michael Bearings Row Row. And I actually took off two magnets, okay, off the side plate. And um, you got thin Destron six pound braided line from Cast King. Got the Zephyr Ultralight. And uh, yeah, let's see if we can slay some fall fish today. All right, that's what we want to see. See what we catch, see what we slay. And uh, yeah, I hope not to get bit off by a pickerel. I want to see how many perch we catch with this one little swim bait because it's supposed to be, you know, super durable. And um, as you guys have seen in one of my episodes that the bluegill, they have torn it up during the summertime. And uh, yeah, well, let's see how it survives when fishing for perch. So you guys are probably wondering, how is this cast doing with the uh, removed two brakes? I gotta say, man, does it feel great on distance wise? However, it is coming out a lot smoother, you could say. A lot smoother. Like, I feel like the stock, you know, with all the magnets on there, what happened is it, it feels a little restricted, right? No matter what you do, you kind of feel like you always have that uh, break there. So I'm just, oh, first fish. Ooh, nice slab in the morning. Look at that. That is a nice freaking slab. Oh man. All right. Off this guy go. But as I was saying, it feels like the stock one, it feels like it's restricted with all the brakes. Like it, you really feel that when you're throwing some of the light lures. But right now that is gone. So if I were to try to remove some more magnets, the question is, would it actually be better? I have no idea. But I heard some people remove three, which is kind of odd. You know, wouldn't you want to remove even an amount of uh, magnets on it? I don't know. You guys let me know in the comments below. I'm not a you know physics major. I don't know much about the magnetic force field. I guess, would that even be physics? I have no idea. You guys tell me. All right, so casting this guy with two magnets removed and I'm still casting at zero breaks. But I have to say, it's pretty smooth, a lot smoother. What if, what if I were to put up to, let's say, you know, two breaks? See, now if I put up to like around two breaks, it feels like the stock. So the brakes are definitely super strong, even though I removed some, right? Yeah, I'm at five right there and that is totally restricted, but that, is surprising that I'm still able to cast this reel, remo removing two magnets and still casting it at minimum breaks. This is super interesting. Mm. When fish jump, you gotta get around it. I don't know if it's still around the area. But let's try that. Oh, there's a lot of bait fish for sure. No, you don't want it. 
It's all right, I guess. Oh, got one. Ooh, big old bluegill. Big old bluegill. Let's go, guys. All right, guys, let's talk about the conditions for the day. When I launched, it was 38 degrees, but it's supposed to hit up to 60, but you know, in the morning, it's pretty darn cold. My hands are still pretty stiff. And I paddled around the main lake so far, I caught like a crappy and a bluegill, and that's pretty much it. The water seems pretty clear here. The surface temperature here is uh, 55.8. And while I'm out there using side structure scan, I have not really picked up any sort of, uh, you could say, big, um, pods of bait fish. In fall, typically, what I do is I chase where the bait fish are at. I chase where I see a lot of, you know, bluegill perch activity for even bass fishing because that's where likely all the fish are going to be at. And if they're not around the main lake, there's one place I love to check during the fall, and that is feeder creeks. Now, not all lakes have big feeder creeks where you can fit a boat through, but if you can fit a boat through or you fit a, a, a kayak through, Potentially that's might where the bait fish are at. So that's where I'm headed to right now. I'm heading right to the feeder creeks and I'm paddling off the creek a little bit and I fish swim baits, some big baits, some small baits, you name it. Let's see how it goes. Oh, there we go. We are creek fishing for some fall perch. Look at that mondo. Look at that mondo. Let me show y'all. Let me show y'all. Bam. Look at that pretty golden guy. Just like the fall colors. What do you guys say? All right, off he goes. So I spent 10 minutes in the, I guess, creek channel, right? In the back creeks. And one perch only came up. But there was two perch that chased my bigger swim bait right at where the creek met the, uh, the main lake. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna back out because I piled in pretty, pretty far up so far. And, uh, I haven't seen any activities. I haven't got any bites other than that one yellow perch. So let's get back out there and uh, see if we can find those fall yellow perch. Oh, there's another perch right there. Here we go. Yeah, they're definitely congregating right at the main portion of the lake where it meets the um, creeks. All right, small little guy, off you go. All right, so this shallow end right here, all it is is gunk floating. Terrible. I don't like fishing stuff like this, so I'm gonna get out of here. So I've been casting and casting and casting in some of these shallow near the banks on one side of the lake. It's a pretty still day today, no wind, and uh, I've I'm going to be telling you guys the truth right now. When it comes to fall fishing, right, and it's close to bluebird skies, and there's no wind, it's going to be tough fishing. So, when's my favorite time to catch fish? Eh, when there's some clouds and some chop. Got to have some chop, but look at this. You guys can see the reflection of the trees pretty darn good here, and we're far away. So that just says that today is going to be a slow day. It's gonna be a slow day. Oh, there we go. Fish at the beach. And it's a good one. Very good one. Whoa. There's a nice pickerel. As figured, they love biting 
these small little swim baits and I hope it doesn't slice my line. I definitely should retie after this. That's a nice one. There we go. All right, all right. First picker of the day. Woo, look at that. Nice little slaunch. Hold it this way so the shadow is not in the way. And um, unplug you. And wow, he did slice it. And uh, off you go. Let's go this way. To the lose. All right. Folks, guess what? I found a little bit of wind. It's blowing that way. So I'm start gonna paddle towards this way and fish these coves and also open water where the wind is blowing. Big fan of wind. Early this morning, there's barely any wind. I fished here a little bit, caught one bluegill. And uh, now I'm back here again. Let's see how things goes in a small little bit. I have a feeling this is gonna be a spot for the day. Oh, there we go. Oh yes, big mama. Here we go. Now they're not having uh, eggs like late fall, not yet. So they're still a little skinny, but this guy choked it. Here we go. All right, off you go. All right, so I am seeing some activity here. One perch, they gotta be like maybe two or three more. They're schooling, but they're moving. So hopefully they are still around the area and we'll catch a few within a few minutes. Those are some nice shadows. Boom, got him. Ha! Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Crappy, crappy. I told you there were some shadows over there. Made a next cast right there, boom. And we got a nice slab. Look at that. Dude, this is a nice one. Very nice one. I should probably start filling up my basket. In you go. Oh, backlash. Surprise. I got backlash on zero brakes or min brakes, but that is because I did remove two magnets. Man, these fish are in and out pretty darn quick. Pretty darn quick. Circle around. I have not seen them yet. Oh, I think they might be on the left. Whoa, just landed. That's what I'm talking about. Another slab. I'll take you. Ooh, beauty, beauty. Oh yeah, that is what I'm talking about. The fall slabs. Woo wee. Let's go, let's go. Right into the basket. Number two. So yeah, I guess the windy side, definitely, definitely gonna produce way more fish than the dead still side. Kind of said that earlier, right? So yeah, I am finding hope. <laughs> I've been down here since, oh, let's say eight o'clock, right? And um, yeah, this is, uh, this is great. I caught three fish within 15 minutes. So, and the last two fish was pretty much, very much uh, 
three minutes apart maybe. So yeah, it's uh, not too bad. I'm gonna work this wind blow side and there's another one right there. Oh yeah. What do we have? Wow, a bigger crappie. A bigger crappie. Ooh. Yo, show me the money. Show me the money. Look at that. Oh yeah. Big as my Asian feet. Let's go. Into the basket. Ah, the wind. That's right. I'm fishing right into the wind, but guess what? Oh, there's a fish right there. <laughs> Dude, when the wind starts picking up, I'm telling you, this is where the bite's gonna be hot, all right? That's another big bondo. Look at that. Woo! Fall crappies at its finest. Look at that. Into the basket it goes as well. So far, got three, four, four crappies. All right. Hopefully they're still there. Oh, got a little bit of backlash into the wind. Now that I've reduced two magnets, of course it's gonna backlash just a little bit when I cast into the wind. So gotta be a little bit careful. But potentially there's gonna be more out here. This is great. Look at all that little dots over there. That looks interesting. Fish? Please say fish. Oh, oh, come on. <laughs> oh, I think they're at the bottom. They're definitely interesting. Interesting bites. Boom, got them. Another slab. I'm gonna circle these slabs nonstop. But wow. This is epic. This is epic. Oh yeah. All right, I am marking them all over the place now. The wind picked up and this is great. Oh, fish on. Uh-oh. What do we have here? Is this a bass? Oh, wow. This might be the biggest crappie of the day. Look at that. This is definitely the biggest crappie of the day. Wow. This guy is huge. Look at that. Oh, man. Oh, man. Slab. This is bigger than my freaking BFS reel. Look at that. It's time to do a photo. I'll be like, yo, this fish is bigger than my reel. All right. This guy definitely get a nice fillet. One more and I am done. Here we go. Fish. Yes. See these right there? I'm marking like that and I'm basically casting right into those stuff. But yeah, these open water slabs, mondo, big mondo slabs. I think I'm done. This, this is all I need, right? Let's see, let's see his size. Yeah, this is a pretty good size. Not as big as the last one, but I think I'm done. Time to go home and cook up some stuff. Oh yeah. No, it won't be a catch and cook because uh, I think that's played out already. And uh, you know, what else do you do with crappies? All you do is fry them, right? All right, I just passed some more right there. Lift and drop. That's all I do is pump, pump, then I drop, watch the line. Keep it a little tight, slow roll it just a little bit, okay? And eventually they'll smack it. It's been a slow day. Oh, got him. There we go, see? Oh look, there's a second one right there too. Wow. 
pretty good size. Pretty freaking good size, man. Off it goes. I was hoping it's gonna be a perch day, but it ended up being a crappy day. My favorite style of fishing. Isn't that great? So apparently the mid-fall perch does not want to bite. Not yet. I'm assuming some of them might still be up the creek channel, like further up the river. So um, yeah, maybe just a couple more weeks. Those yellow perch will be out and open just like those crappies. I mean, those crappies were just out out of nowhere. You know, th th there wasn't many uh, bait pods at all that day. But uh, crappies, they're known to school up in open water. So with the side structure scan, I was able to mark a few and go catch some fish. And I don't mean just a few. I mean, I hit my limit way past my limit that day, but I only kept six. So um, yummy, yummy in my tummy. Anyhow, let's talk about the Casking Kestrel Elite BFS reel with the two magnets removed. Now, it's still overbraked, but it's feeling a lot better. The stuff are coming out a lot smoother and as you guys have seen, I backlash a few times, but not crazy, not crazy at all. But yeah, I'm still casting mainly at minimum breaks or seal breaks. Uh, once in a while, if I cast towards the wind, I'll have a little backlash. Sometimes I may hit one notch or two notch. Two is gonna be one, one break. And um, yeah, it's, it's okay, a lot better. Now, I've been reading online. Some people have said that uh, these type of breaks, you should have a even amount of magnets on both sides. However, I have also read that some folks said removing three magnets total on a Casking Kestrel Elite BFS reel will make it a lot better. Now, I'm not quite sure because I am not a physics person or I don't even know where magnets fall under, right? Which part of science fall under. If you guys have any sort of knowledge about this, what if I remove one more magnet? Just one more. So it'll be an odd amount of magnets in there. Will it impact my casting like badly? I don't know. If you guys have experience, leave me a comment below. But if you guys want to see me just test it out, like a short cast testing session, I could do so. Just let me know in the comments below. And, you know, I guess I'll go out and uh, have a little bit of fun. Anyway, I thank you all for watching. Hopefully, the yellow perch will be biting very soon. But if they don't bite, it's okay. I got the crappies. That's right. Anyway, see you guys later. The fish don't wait. Go get them.